Hello everybody. I decided to bring a couple of new videos about um, a different subject which I briefly talked about in the past but it becomes more and more apparent that it is more and more important so I will dedicate some more time on that subject. So, uh, the subject is about how can we actually transfer the energy we harvesting with any system we have how are we going to do that? How can we achieve that? So let's say we, are, we, have, we, we measure some kind of energy gain and now we want to translate this energy into a system which we can use then. So we start with a simple fact here. So let's say we have a coil here. My example, you see my bipolar Tesla coil. And from my experiments, you remember said I did measure um, a gain of energy. Now let's see what we can do to bring that energy down to that level where we can use it and maybe we have some surprises in terms of um, how we can actually utilize this energy. The first thing we need to do is we have to start with design. So what we have to de define first of all is if we have an energy source which we have to use to excite the system, then we have to determine the parameters of this energy system, meaning electrical potential level, voltage, how high, and frequency. So let's assume we have an energy system we're going to use as excitation and we, the, the, the known value is a frequency and a voltage. What we now have to derive is we have to use our various systems. We're talking about coil systems and we have to make sure that this energy is transferred within the coil systems to our load. So first thing we do here, we are building technically, we should, based on that energy inject of frequency and voltage, we have to define a coil system. If that is not the case, or let's say we just build a coil and we want to adapt that, so that's what we're going to do. We have, first of all, from the coil system here, and that my example said is the secondary, I have to change the frequency, resonant frequency of this coil to the frequency matching my exciting system. So let's just assume I have a 30 kilohertz, 30 kilocycle system, which I have. Um, as a high voltage system or I might have a low low frequency system like 50 Hertz or uh, 100 Hertz what we need to do is we have to adapt our secondary coil to that frequency that's the first task we have to achieve so how are we gonna do that I measure the inductance of the coil so the first thing I need to know is the coil system I have here new the secondary has an inductance and the inductance need to be matched with a capacitor. We talk about an LCR circuit and of course the wiring do have some kind of resistance as well that will, will play also a, a role. And I have to change this coil to match my exciting system. So here we have as you can see at 1 kilohertz we have 57.96 so this changes with changing in frequency. So we have probably to calculate between 57, 96 and higher. If I go up to the frequency higher, so here you can see at 10 kilohertz is 58 and at 100 kilohertz it's a tremendous change. But we are at 30 kilo cycle, so we should be all right with having it that's under 100 hertz, 58. 20 measure to 1 kilohertz we select 58 millihenry for our calculation on my website you find it to, under tutorial this calculation sheet we are we inserted here the 30 kilohertz and the 58 millihertz and if I click on calculate it will tell me so 0.48525 nanofarad is that's what we have to use for a system and that's good I have that already as a as a variable capacitor 
available so I'm going to use this one so how do we measure now so we're connecting in parallel the capacitor of the known value here I have a variable capacitor one nanofarad we connect on the base of the capacitor I can connect the grounding of the oscilloscope probe the positive side goes to the tip of the oscilloscope and it's very important you have to use 100 to 1 or higher otherwise you're loading your coil system and you get false readings so very very important 100 to 1 so on a frequency I adjust 30 kilohertz I have here 5 volt at the moment here um, high impedance just in that 50 to the cycle now let's add run and let's add tune in to the frequency to match the 30 kilohertz here we go here I have a match to the 5 volt a nice sine wave and that gives me the value so this measurement now I will pick up from the capacitor so there's one thing I need to mention if the coil system is not optimized for your load and you have to make adjustment with a capacitor to achieve this frequency you will not get an ideal ideal Q or the highest value available for the system so basically the best idea would be that the coil system is as close as matching to the frequency as possible however the problem is you lower your corner frequency the higher the resistance becomes because you have to wind more and more coil so more and more coil means okay the inductance is increasing but also the resistance increases that means also the voltage will increase here in my example this coil was basically 165 185 kilohertz coil resonance on its own so you saw the value from um, the 30 kilohertz so under 92 kilohertz for this frequency as you can see I get almost twice as much Q here from the system so that would be here 463 volt however under 32 kilohertz so 32 kilohertz you see that is also resonance frequency a harmonics of it so set the specs value I had it before 255 volt is the maximum value I get on 30 kilohertz and it looks like yeah looks like 0.5 nanofarad the value is at half of the veins so that is my so my measurement is correct from the calculation thank you